Decluttering your desk? Looking to type from the couch? Here's all the advice, nuances, and deep dive reviews you need to pick the right wireless keyboard and keep your fingers happy. What's Razer's secret with the Ornatochroma? Switches that combine the, ah, uh, key features of the predominant typing technologies in the consumer keyboard market. Razer calls the technology mecha membrane, and it's just what it sounds like, part its own proprietary mechanical switch, part silicone dome. When you hit a key, the mechanical switch depresses the dome to register the stroke. This eliminates the need for a full version of either type of switch, but gives you a fair amount of the supposed benefits of both. That all happens under the hood, though. One thing you're more likely to be able to see are the updated keycaps, which are about half the height of traditional keycaps. In addition to requiring you to move less weight with each press, Razer claims that the shorter cap reduces the time it takes for your actions to register, thus keeping you typing more quickly and landing more hits in games that demand quick response. Razer also includes a big padded wrist rest that connects to the magnetized front of the keyboard, giving you a place to rest your hands during those times the action slows down. Though given that the keyboard also supports 10 key rollover and 10 key anti-ghosting, I guess it's left for an exercise to the player to determine when that's supposed to happen. In every other way, the Ornata Chroma looks like a typical no-frills gaming keyboard. Its measurements are unremarkable, and it's all black, except for a backlighting, which can be controlled using the downloadable Razer Synapse software to appear in any of 16.8 million colors, in a variety of pre-configured patterns or a layout of your own design. The form factor of the K63 wireless mimics Corsair's other 10 keyless keyboard designs like the K65 RGB, offering all the functionality you would expect from a premium mechanical keyboard. The K63 is big and hefty, measuring 14.5 by 7 by 1 inches and weighing 3.5 pounds without its detachable wrist rest. There are more dainty and less expensive wireless keyboards to be had, including the Logitech K480 or the Repu 8900P but you'll need to sacrifice the mechanical switches I really like on the K63. Full dedicated media controls are a convenient feature on the K63, allowing you to easily manipulate the playback of music and movies. The cherry red switches, a staple of the mechanical keyboard community, serve as the K63's backbone and report with the clarity and accuracy you would expect from any top-tier gaming keyboard. However, cherry red switches are currently the only option, leaving no wiggle room for personal preferences for those looking for something a little noisier, or with any kind of tactile feedback. Unlike many of Corsair's other flagship keyboards, the K63 lacks full RGB capability, instead featuring only cool blue backlighting for its keys and two adjustable brightness settings. However, different lighting patterns are available through the versatile and easy-to-use Corsair Utility Engine software. Q allows you to easily set up different profiles with their own individual macros that you can switch between with a dedicated button on the face of the keyboard. It has a 1,000HC polling rate and full N key rollover. The DOS Keyboard 4 dispenses with much of the plastic that had previously defined the line's looks. The fine if flimsy top deck has been replaced with an aluminum one that, despite barely altering the weight, makes for a noticeably sturdier, firmer feel beneath your fingers. One other major change is that there are no longer flip-out legs on the underside of the keyboard for adjusting the typing angle, now you prop up the keyboard using an included magnetic footbar, a workable, if inelegant solution. Otherwise, the overall design of the DOS Keyboard 4 is largely unchanged from that of the Model S, the black exterior finish is now matte rather than glossy, and a different font is being used on the keycaps, but that's about it. The biggest visual departure is a functional one. Whereas the DOS Model S added media capabilities by using a devoted key to flip the actions of many of the F1 F12 keys, the DOS Keyboard 4 introduces dedicated hardware controls. Located just above the number pad are buttons for sleep, mute, play slash pause, track back, and track forward, along with a large volume knob, the addition of all of which thrusts the DOS Keyboard 4 into the 2010s. One further change nudges it further to the front of the pack, the two-port USB hub, also located in the upper right, now supports the faster USB 3.0, an industry rarity. Those USB ports have also been moved from the keyboard's right edge to its rear edge, which is more convenient if you're a right-handed mouser. The Ergo K860 is a one-piece split keyboard, or a soft split as I like to call it. In order to ensure that you don't need to pinch your shoulder blades to push your arms or wrists together, 
there's a triangular gap between the sets of keys destined for use with your left and right hands. The middle of the keyboard also curves upward, so you don't need to twist your wrist to force your fingers to lay flat on the keys. The result is that you can type while performing fewer rotations, stretches, and other unnatural movements that can hurt you over time, even if you don't notice them day to day. Compared to other unibody ergonomic keyboards, the K860 has a fairly intense incline, but the curve is across the primary segment of the board, so the slope feels relatively shallow. While it's clear when you put your fingers on it that you're approaching from an angle, it doesn't feel radically different from a standard keyboard. This makes it relatively easy to adopt the Ergo K860 and feel comfortable right away, which is not always a given with ergonomic keyboards. Logitech has taken some extra steps to make the transition easier. The most obvious is the padded wrist rest bolted onto the bottom of the keyboard. The wrist rest follows the curve of the keyboard, making it effective no matter where you move your hands. The padding is comfortable for your wrists, but also firm enough to support the weight of your arms and to stay in place so your posture doesn't waver as you get tired. The styling calls attention to this premium keyboard's two parts. The conventional part includes a full-sized keyboard encased in dark, textured plastic with a few extras thrown in, like a dedicated screenshot button and a shortcut to your on-screen calculator. There are also physical key labels for functions that are unique to Windows or Mac OS, the Windows Start key doubles as the Option key, and the Alt key does extra duty as the Command key. To ease touch typing, the keys themselves are designed using what Logitech refers to as spherical dishing, noticeably sculpted instead of simply curved, with the square letter keys featuring circular depressions to cradle fingertips and the rectangular keys like Backspace and Enter featuring oval depressions. The keys are also extremely sturdy, with very little wobble, though not quite as stable as the butterfly switch keyboard on the MacBook and MacBook Pro. The downside of stability, however, is key travel, which is extremely shallow on the craft, akin to what you'd get on an ultra-portable laptop. The result is a less than satisfying typing experience that is the keyboard's main weakness, the craft simply doesn't offer the pleasing feel of a mechanical keyboard that will keep the fingers of a novelist or gamer happy all day long. The craft really isn't intended for novelists or gamers, though, as evidenced by its other main part, a thick strip of aluminium above the keys with a giant rotating dial mounted on the left-hand side. If the keys are the craft's signature weakness, then the dial is its signature strength. It's a touch-sensitive piece of aluminium that rotates and clicks to navigate specific functions of certain apps, 